Okay. All right. So, uh, welcome everybody. Kitzah Shechon Aruch, the Bridge Code of Jewish Law. We're doing Chapter 9. And we're up to uh, Number 3. But um, in Chapter 9, just uh, two... Just a few background points, just to point out that help us understand the next few uh, laws. So we've been discussing sitzes. Now, this, although we call it sitzes, the sitzes technically refer just to the strings, right? And the beged, the garment, that's that's the you know what the sitzes are attached to. So um, it says we have to make. Uh, Gedilim, let's call it, I don't know, the sitzes. I don't know what you call it. Some people translate it as tassels, but it's not just, you know, it's, it's a very specific thing that we need to do on tie. So the actual, the, the strings that are tied in a certain way, we have to, uh, says, taselacha, you have to make for yourself. So in other words, they have to be tase, they have to be made. So, if you would have, let's say, for an example, corners, you know, just a corner, and with sitters tied to it, and you could attach these corners to your garment, that wouldn't work. Because you didn't make sitters on the garment, you put on, the, so they have to be made and not like come into being right so it'll, it'll end up if if you if you would have pre-made one that somehow got attached they weren't actually made on the garment they just sort of um you know i don't want to say came to being on its own because they're always made by someone but um it's not what we need to do so they actually have to be uh made and made on the four corners. So we actually have to attach it to the corner. We have to make it when the, the baguette is in place. And uh, so we're gonna see um, how this works in the next few few laws. But these are, this is the underlying principle. They actually have to make the sitters on the existing garment on the existing corner. Um, so that, yeah, David. I'm sorry if you covered this already. I couldn't make it last week because of a medical uh, situation. Um, did you mention about uh, a woman's uh, approach to tzitzis? Like what, she sh what should she be thinking about while she is learning these laws? Uh, well, we mentioned that, um, that, that women are exempt and that what it reminds the men of of the uh, 630 mitzvahs, uh, women have a bina yaseira and an extra degree of understanding. So there's some, like I said, in this lifetime, I wasn't a woman and a man to be able to compare it. Um, even in today's times, I can't do that, but on a spiritual level, for sure. So, uh, but but uh, they don't need the constant reminder. There's 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 a uh, deep significance. But anyway, it's a there's a, there's a more natural, in, uh, intuitive understanding. But um, as we're going through Kitzur Shchanar, hopefully, God willing, beginning to end, we won't skip, and uh, they'll know what to uh, how it works. You know, there were there were many times, you know, um, that uh, there were certain, certain families that the the men primarily studied um, Talmud and, and women primarily studied the Halacha. And there were times that something happened, there was a question at the Shabbos table. And it was the um, the women who were able to give the uh, the Pesach, you know, say what the actual Halacha is. So it would be very cute if uh, the ladies were able to to uh, answer discussion of men, how their sitters should be made or whether they're kosher or not. It was a famous story. I forgot the details with the Alta Rebbe's daughter and yeah. carrying on Shabbos. 
Right, yeah. Oh, there we go. This is an example. Another example of this concept of being made. Where are we at, Rabbi? Sorry? Where are we at? Chapter Where 9. We're about to start number 3. Another example of something need to be made and it can't be in existence previously, like sort of is, is a sukkah. So for example, the schach, the, the, we'll call it the roof, for lack of a better word, but the covering, the covering of the sukkah has to go on last. That's what makes it a sukkah. So you have to have all the other ingredients there, the walls and everything else, in order to put the schach on. And then you've made a sukkah. But if you if you would, let's say, person put up a frame and then put the schach on without, you didn't have walls. And they've just put up um, the schach, the, the roofing, and then they put up the walls. The sukkah is not kosher because the, the sukkah wasn't made. Putting the schach, the shade, the that's what makes the sukkah. And you have to have everything else there. That has to be, has to go onto something that becomes a sukkah. So if the walls come on afterwards, then the sukkah the, was, so to speak, pre-made or, or came into being on its own when you put the walls up. So it's the same I idea with the sitzes. The sitzes have to be made. And part of being made means has to be, everything else has to be there. You make it onto something. Um, it can't be come to exist on its own, meaning that, you know, let's say you just tied it onto a little corner piece and then sewed that corner piece on. Then when it became part of the, the garment, the garment that was fitting for sitters came into existence, the sitters were already made. So it, it, so to speak, came to existence on its own, even though it was made by someone. But when all the other factors came together, it was already there. So it was like uh, it, it, it wasn't made by us. Uh, was, was that somewhat clear? No idea? Okay. Can, do you mean that it should be assembled by a person who actually is wearing it? That's what you are saying? No, that it no, could... no. So it does have to be assembled. What it means is it can't be pre-assembled. So it has to be put on. Let me just, I don't know, just make up a, a nothing to do example. It doesn't mean anything, but just to try and let, let's say for an example, um, let's say, Rabbi, um, Rabbi you know, yes, I can interrupt you. I think if I'm reading you right, you have the material. For the sisters, everything is there. You have the piece that goes over your body. Then, but before it goes on your body, you have the four corners, and then you put the um, the sisters on each corner. Four on each corner gives you a total of eight on each corner. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's it's well, it ha everything has to be. That's true, but. Just to give it, you know, it's it's not a halak example. It's just a made up thing to illustrate the point. You can imagine someone's building a house. So they've just done the framing. So you've got the wooden framing. There's no real walls, no roof, you know, and they start bringing in all their bedroom furniture and the linen and, 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 and start setting up. So you can't call that a bedroom because there's, there's no wall. There's no, there's no roof. It's just, it's just some framing. Exactly. So putting putting the putting the the bed and the linen and the pillows there, it's it's the inappropriate time for it to go there. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. When it's a finished product, yeah. Where, then where the, you can go ahead and do it. That's right. So where this example is a bit different is that if someone then put up the walls and the roof, it would still be a bedroom. You don't have to take the furniture back out. But when it came, comes to the case of sisters you do, so to speak, have to take the furniture out. Meaning, if you don't have a fully finished garment ready to go, four-corner garment ready to go, then you can't attach the sitters. And if you well, that, did that's attach exactly them... what I was saying. Yeah, and if you did attach them prematurely, 
they aren't they didn't become sitters. So it's not kosher. Yeah, so you would have to untie them and retie them once you have everything else in place. Correct. That's what I was saying. Okay. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Uh, and and so uh, I said the same idea yeah, of putting the skach on the sukkah. Rebbe, I'm, to, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I can't find the spot that you were talking about. So Is chapter it, nine. Ch chapter 10. Yeah. Yeah. Sif Gimel. Number three. Number three. We, I thought we went over it uh, last time. No, we didn't do three. We just finished two. We only did take two. Yeah, we we may have started a line or two, but we didn't. Uh... Rabbi, I just have a quick question. Yes. It's not really a question. I think it's more of a statement. Ostensibly, the, the tzitzit as a fabric is not a holy document until the tzitzit are placed on it because that's what the dictate is in the Shulchan Aruch. That's the simplicity of it, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Thank and, and but, but the important point to remember is that if you would put the sits on at the wrong time or right. prematurely, then it doesn't work. So, right. and, and so for example, it. yeah, if someone would just like, let's say, make little corner pieces with a hole right. with pre tied sitters and attach that corner piece to a garment, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Rabbi, so, yeah. My Gimel says a makeup should not be symbol at the Correct. That's it. But you're talking about the, about the tzitzit itself, the food. So I, I was giving an introduction so we can understand the. Okay, that's why I couldn't levels. find where I am. Yeah. Okay. So let's go number three. A nekev shemachnisim boyes a sitzer, the hole in the garment where we're going to put the strings into. Lo yerach misvasa beged, ein ba'aruch, ein ba'rochov, yoyse meshloisha gedulim. It can't be more than three agdulim. I'm going to define that measurement measurement in a minute. Can't be more than three agdulim from the corner, length or width, because you have to put it in the corner. The corner doesn't mean the very edge. It can be up to a little bit in. So gedulim is is this little piece, this little top, um, um, from the top knuckle of the thumb, the the uh, the width here of this little piece, you know, the length. So this is... Um, the narrowest part of the, of the agudal. Yeah, so it's that little... So it's... Uh, it, it, it needs... It can't be more than three of those away from the corner on either side. Right? Because then it's not the corner anymore. Um, we'll skip the bracket. Just uh, in the brackets, just saying that there's different opinions whether it's the length of this piece or the width of this piece, but it's not a not a huge difference. Why? Why can't it be further away? Once it's further than that away, it's not called the corner of the garment anymore. It's just called the garment. It's part of the garment. It might be more towards one side or another side, but it's not the corner anymore, and it has to go in the corner. Now, let's say you made the hole too far away. Now, now once you tie the sitzes and you tie the knot tightly, it's, it sort of squashes up the the corner a little bit. Makmit minatala such a boy neck of lamata, and it'll squash it up to the point where it's now less than three of these away. Become mock impossible, still not good. Because it actually has to be not just it's within close to the corner because you squashed it, it has to be close to the corner because it actually is close to the corner. In, in actuality. Now, the Imla Acha Shatalas at Sitsa Benekib Shulamaila Menashir. Now, this is why we need the introduction to understand this point. The hole was too far away from the corner. You tie the sitsas on. So, in other words, these sitsas were not good. Then, Chosach Benekib, you cut 
either making the hole bigger or cut off the edge of the garment either way. So now we've shrunk the distance and the hole is now on the right point. So the sitzes are, are now within three little thumb tops from the corner, which is a good position. Nevertheless, possible. It's not good. Why? You have to make them. They can't be uh, already made. Because they were already existing. And, and when they were already existing before, they were positioned correctly. And once you put them in the correct position, they were already existed. And so it was not the making of the sitzes that made them sitzes. It was the um, cutting or trimming, you know, of, of, of the garment. And then once they were in the right spot, so they were fit to be sitzes, they were already made when they became fit to be sitzes. And so that's not good. They have to be made in a way that they're fitting from the beginning. Right. So likewise, uh, they can't be closer to the garment more than the than one of these. Um, so they can't be further than three, top of the thumbs, but they can't be closer less than one from the corner. Why can't they be closer than one? Because less, if it's closer than, than a top, that's also not called a corner. That's called, I mean, they're translating it as, as under the corner. But in other words, we call it, it's the seam. It's the under the, the edge. Whatever, whatever what we're going to call it. it it's, so it's also not a corner. If when you tied it on, it was in the right spot, it wasn't too close. But as you tighten the knot, it scrunched up the garment and made it a little bit closer. That's kosher. Because we're not looking necessarily at how, how it appears because we scrunched it, but we're looking at it, is it in the right position? This is, by the way, the people have the custom to have two holes on their uh, on their corners or their sitters, as opposed to one hole. It's partly for this reason. It avoids this issue. Now, um, if you put these, the, now, now we're not talking about the sitters. Now we're talking about uh, just fringes of the actual garment. So if you didn't sew a nice uh, seam around the edge, you can have like little loose um, strands because it's a woven woolen garment. You can have these edges, little loose. Now, it's not clear. We don't know. Do these little bits hanging off these fringes, do they count as part of the garment or not. So when we say it has to be between one and three of these, do we include the single threads that hang off the edge or not? And it can make a difference. So how do we get ourselves out of the doubt? Okay, and therefore, we have to cut them off before we um, tie the scissors so it's nice and smooth. And if you look at most sitzes today, they actually, you know, they've got a, uh, it seems not the right word, but they, they sew along the edges. Right? They, they close it up so there's no loose threads. Metallus caught in the hugging sas last session in the kovim ze esel ze. When it comes to the talus cotton, the, the small one, the one that we wear, not one with Davini. There are those who make two holes as opposed to one hole next to each other. Kamait Seireh, like the Hebrew vowel of Seireh, which is two dots. 
Machnisim b'shneiyem es sitzes v'im talus es talus mechutz, and they tie the thread through those holes, so they hang on the garment towards the outside, and that that uh that avoids the issue of scrunching and 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 various things. Um, so uh, many people do that. Uh, Chabad also. Um, Chabad actually not only make two holes, but make two holes at an angle. If you look at a Chabad sitzes, and that's to keep them hanging on the right, hanging down and not moving to the side. Okay. So, um, sum up number three. Sitzes have to be uh, made by you or by a person with intention from the B sitzes. They have to be made when all the other factors to make kosher sitzes are in place. If they're made when some of the factors are missing, and then you finish those factors, they're considered pre-made, and pre-made uh, or come come you know already in existence, that's uh, that's no good. Has to be made when everything is set to go. Okay, number four. So we've got the scenario. In Bishas Kashir sitzes high neck of Rachel Kashir. You made them, it was perfect. They were in the right spot. What happened though? Sometime afterwards, the sits is tall. Either the whole tore a little bit so it got bigger, or the edge of the garment tore off, whatever happened. And now it's too close. So it was the right distance when it was made, but now it's too close. So we say, they're still good. It doesn't ruin it because the whole thing is making them. So if they were made in the right spot, so obviously if it tears too much, they're going to fall off. But as long as it's made in the right spot, as long as they're still connected, uh, there's no problem. Why? The Torah was only particular about being in this defined area of corner of Kanaf at the time of making. It's the time of making. Shnemar, as it says in the Torah, the Osulem sitzes, and you'll they'll make sitzes. Al on the Kanaf. We're loosely translating it as corner, but it's it's defined by between one and three of these top of the thumb. It's the making. So after the fact, if they're made properly, even though it's tall, it's still good. It's good to have a, an edging around the hole to uh, to avoid this happening. And also on the edge of the garment, in order that you won't get into the situation where it gets too close. Okay. Clear runs very silent. Everyone's very quiet. Okay. The instructions are accurate yeah. in Mar- very detail. All right. Good. Yeah. Uh, Mar- Marachai. Yeah, well, uh, if some of this uh, sounds familiar uh, to certain people, it's because uh, the Rambam, one parak a day, yes. you know, le- learned these laws last week. Oh, okay, very uh, good. I think like like Tuesday through Friday or something like that. So got a down pat revision. Right. Very good. Hey, number five. Now, Nahagin Lasa is but sitzes Hamisha Kisharim Kafulin. So, how we, the, exactly how we tie the halachic um, re, minimum requirement is not a lot. But the accepted custom for a long, long time uh, has been that we fought, we end up doing five double knots. Now, not right after that. We're going to have some wrapping around in between the knots. 
but there's five double knots in the string. Sheish b'neim arba chulis, that they have between them four strings that are inserted through the hole, the chulis. Chulis is like a, means like a spine, like the spine, same word. So not everyone makes sitters with chulis today. Um, it's, it's definitely, according to everyone, better to make chulis, but it, it's more complicated and takes longer. And therefore, uh, time is money, right? Because people people who who tie it get paid per garment. So unless, so if you're going to have chulis, is a greater charge and various things because it takes longer to do it. So if you look at some pairs of scissors between the knots, when it wraps around the string, wrap, wraps around the other strings, it's just a wrap, just going round and round. So it's all smooth, it's all level, all the way around. And other sitters, um, it's lumpy, like a spine, like a spinal cord. Um, and that's because they they also insert it under one string as they wrap it around. And that's called chulius. So um, anyway, we wrap around four times. So you wraps around Four times and then you do a double knot. And then what you do is you um you you have one called the shamash, that's one that wraps around, and we do it seven times. And then you you um you do another double knot, then you wrap it around eight times. Do a double knot. Then you wrap it around eleven times. The others. Do a double knot. Then you wrap it around thirteen times. The other strings. And do a double knot. And then you'll end up. So again, so if you look, you'll see you have uh, on your on your tzitzes. We have um um. Double knot, a series of seven, a double knot, a series of eight, wrapping around the strings, double knot, series 11, ser double knot, series 13, double knot. Then we have the loose hanging strings. Meyais noit sitzes, who she called hachulias, shawas ba'arkon. And ideally, to make these sitzes beautiful, each uh, gap, each gap between the knots, between these should be of equal length. They should be of equal length. Uh, even though there's less strings, so you've got to space it. And therefore, in the first section, in this first section, the there's less wrapping, so you have to space them out a little bit more. And in the second one, which is now eight, so we bring them a little bit closer. And so, so on and so forth. With the third and fourth one, where you got more, you wrapped it around more times, you put them closer together, so they end up being the same length. Now, the minimum length of the... Um, whole piece from the beginning of the first knot to the to the end of the uh, the strings should be at least 12 of these thumb widths and the ideal way is that of these 12 thumb widths that you've made it long the parts where you have the knots and the wrapping around should be one third, and the loose hanging strings should be two thirds of that length. Okay, you dark day called Gudel, and therefore what you want to do is try and make uh, each uh, subsection between double knots one um, thumb width. You call Chlia Arba Gudulim Bachutim Atulis Shemaina. 
So then it ends up that you have uh, there four and the loose hanging strings are eight. And that's how you get the third two thirds. And if they're longer, then you should also space out the the knots and the wrappings a little bit more if the strings are longer. So you can keep this third and two thirds um, so it looks nice. Tell the dark day classes called Shorim by Arba Chutim Shimsad in Arba Chutim Shadze. She called Chut Cholo Chetzel the Khan Chetzel the Khan. Then the last thing we say is that when you make it, you should have the four. So you got your four strings, you put them through the side, through the hole, and you end up with four on each, each side. You got eight. You should try and keep the ones that are on the right always on the right, and the ones on the left always on the left. And they should all stay together. So what you end up doing is you put a little bow at the end of one. And when you tie it, so um, whatever you're doing these knots, whatever's coming from the right stays on the right, it comes on the left, stays on the left. Because when you wrap it, it's not, you know, you lose track. Okay. Vov, number six. Um, if the strings weren't cut from each other, right? So if someone came up with an idea, instead of taking four strings and putting through the hole, you know, making eight, you know, four on each side, what he's going to do, he's going to put one long string and he's going to keep threading it. He's going to put it through, take it out the full length, then bring it back. And then at the end, he'll cut the place where the loop is. So he can't do that. <laughs> We're going to see. So, but this is first going to give the scenario. Instead of cutting the string, so because what might end up happening is even though you have the four strings that go through the hole, making eight, you know, four on each side of the hole, they may have originally been from one long ball of string or sister string, but you cut each one to the right length. And you put them through separately. So the imloy pasuk is chutim zem is Someone didn't do this. He's got this one long ball of string, and he didn't cut separate pieces. Shalaka chut echad oirech moid took one really long piece, put it through the hole, the kafalo la arba, and then he took it out the length one needs to be, folded it back, brought it back through the hole. Put out the length it needs to be, folded it back, brought it through the hole. The and he and he put it through the hole like that. So you end up, it looks like four strings, but they're actually connected at the ends. Looks like eight different strings, but they're connected at the ends. Shot him and he ties them up. And after he's done all of that, he cuts the loop, and now you have separate strings. Did everyone get the scenario? Yeah, he doubled yeah, it yeah, up and yeah. then cut to single. So it's possible. It's not good. Because as we learned before, the shun dechsiv gedilim tase loch. You have to, has to be made. Right? These sitzes have to be made. But dar shinon, and we learn out tase v'lim and also it has to be, you make it when everything is as it should be and not when everything as it should be comes about the pre-made. So that would be pre-made. Perish, what does this mean? So it requires, so to be made, it requires that when the sitzes are made, these garment should be meeting the halachic requirements. And the strings mean the halachic requirements. Can't be you make it on something that's no good. And afterwards you make it good. Which then makes it uh, seemingly good. But what happened was, as we explained, uh, it becomes pre-made. Because when everything comes into the... Everything becomes right, the sits are already existing. 
the Zer apostle, and that's not good. Okay, so we ha had that in the introduction, but I, I brought it forward to discuss it so we would understand the law still now. But here's where it gives a definition. Likewise, let's say what happened. We give another scenario of how they end up being pre made. You made the sits properly. You got your nice garment here. Everything's perfect. Tie the sits in the right way, the right time. 100% good. Then what happened? The nikra beged. The garment tore. So what you want to do is you want to cut off this corner from the torn one and sew it on to another one. That's which means it's going to be pre-made on that new one. Or a fill beged there or even the same gum. Going for example, it it tore the whole tore, and it's come off. Enough of the the sitzer, the strings have fallen off, ripped the whole corner tore, the holes torn to the corner. This was the talus of the nekev, and so you think what I'll do? I'll put it back in place and I'll sew up where it tore and recreate the hole. So any of those scenarios, Zeo Gum came possible. This is also possible. It's not good. Because even though this when you know, although we said this already, has to can't be pre-made, but in this case, you actually made it properly initially, and then something happened. But because you're putting because it was, came off and you're putting it back on, this is also considered pre-made and not made. It comes pre-made because of the way it was done before. Yep. The chain and kesha is a tzitzis, b'shashi talus, their potama tzitzis. Likewise, as let's say for an example, you attach the tzitzis when the garment did not require them yet. Good going for example. Shal ruba toifoi, v'acha kach toifu min aptfiras atchuruboi pasuach v'chayev. What happened was. The the garment, most of the garment was was sewn. In other words, it weren't four corners. It was like a t-shirt, and it just had like uh, the corners like that. It was just that much apart. Let's say not enough. Then he scissors, and you tied them on, and then you opened it up. You took scissors or whatever, and you opened it up. That now it's a four cornered garment. The high scissors. And it now becomes obligated in sitzes. So imi shorat sitzes kamoshein. If these sitzes are going to stay on, uh, even though it looks looks like it's all good, but when they're attached, the garment didn't require them. Gum came pesulus. They're also no good because again, mishum tasevulim in asli. This is another example of it being pre-made and not that you made it. Sarach lahate is sitzes. So what do you have to do in this case? You have to untie the sitzes strings. You ask the kasher and kalocha, and if you put them back on, retie them. The chain kol beyetz bezeh the same with anything else similar to this. Any other situation similar in any way, uh, we can't have the pre-made. Has to be uh, attached when the garment is um, ready. Put together. That's right. Now, now. I when have, we, excuse, me, yeah. excuse me for one second, Rabbi. I have a question for you. Yes. With the tzitzes, let's say on a talit, after years, they're, they're not broken and they're not ripped, but some are longer than the others now. Can yes. they be cut to the same lowest length, which is still long enough? You could, as long as it's still long enough. I would avoid it because what happens is, as time goes on, you know they, they, you know, you get little bits fall off, and if you trim them down, you're going to end up with nothing. Uh, yeah, with nothing. That's right. So um, we're going to see later on in the chapter what's the mem. You know, it could be one, one of them is cut off almost completely. So we're going to see that's still good. Again, provided it was made properly in the first place. So there's, sure. there's, 
So what, what we're discussing now is making a property in the first place. And then we're going to get to later in the chapter is it, it was made properly, but then something happened to the strings. So at what point is it no good anymore? I, I think the reason, uh, I think the reason why some are longer, some are shorter is in the knot. When you're making the knot, well, they if, become shorter and longer. Look, they, they are handmade. So it's always going to be slightly, you no, know, but, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't even. be noticeably. Shouldn't be noticeably longer and shorter. Um, I'm saying when you start out, they're all even, right? Correct. Then when you make the knot, well, one's longer. You have one much longer than the other. Longer. Yeah. Depends what place in the knot they are yeah. positioned. So, so they'll be slightly, so it'll be you know like this yeah. much, this much off. Yeah, but five but, but, knots. But he's asking if like one tall. Make, let's say one tall. It's only half, half yeah, the, uh, the the length. So. Right. Um, but the, the, the ones that I have are some of them are about an inch shorter or an inch and a half combination between them. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I wouldn't trim them. Okay, that's but, all I wanted yeah, to hear. Yeah. Thank you. No problems. Zion, number seven. So now that we know what the length is meant to be in after and the whole can't be torn and, and various things. So therefore, koidem shizate betalus before you put on your talus. Yib doik es the sitzes im hem You have to check the sitzes to make sure they're still kosher. Because we know sometimes it gets caught in the chair and it tears or someone was standing on as you're folding it up. Whatever happens to be, they can they can tear or just age, they get they're brittle. So each day before we put them on, we should give a quick check just to make sure that the hole didn't tear and the strings didn't tear and they're all still good. You have to check the strings that the inside the hole was a krichos and you have to check the um, the the bit that wraps around on the revolutions the rim, or whatever you call it. The rim they put on the hole. It's like a rim. No, now we're talking about what the string that wraps around the other ones. Oh, so here, the kudam is ever said that they don't, they didn't, they didn't come apart. And the uh, nishtal avoy, the base kinesis. Now, all right, so that's what we need to, we need to check them. Yeah, so, so you need, you need to check them. Now, Someone's late. He came to show a little bit late. And he, he, if he's going to check them, because it takes time, then his bottom is going to, you know, he's going to miss davening the Midnight Shimon Esrei with the minion. He doesn't have to, doesn't have to check and separate it. We can rely on the presumption that since yesterday or they were good or for you have a Shabbos Talmud, I sweet that all good. But ideally, every time before you put it on, you should check it. Okay. Ches number eight. Kaula mitzvahs, mabarach leim, oibalis yosin. All mitzvahs, you make a bracha before you do it. Of course, the exception is uh, when ladies light Shabbos candles. Because uh, when we light, when you light Shabbos candles, if you say the bracha, you're going to bring in Shabbos, and then you can't light anymore. So therefore, need to uh, uh, light, then say the bracha. But all other mitzvahs, before you light menorah, um, before you put on tefillin, um, whatever it happens to be, all other mitzvahs, the bracha is made first. Perish kaidem asiyah. So the bracha is made before you do the action, And after you made the blessing, take from yad immediately. So there's no gap between the bracha and the performance of the mitzvah. So this is a mitzvah, you perform the mitzvah, you do the mitzvah without any interruption. So the same is going to apply to putting on a talus. So the chain, therefore, what do you do? You take the talus in your two hands. So you've already checked the strings. You open it up, it's in your two hands. 
you have a mind that Hashem has commanded us to wrap ourselves in tzitzis, in order that we remember to do all the mitzvahs, not out of habit, but because Hashem told us to, Shnema says, a recent oisoy is hard time is called mitzvah Hashem. Right? The reason for the sits is that we should look at them and we should remember all the mitzvahs Hashem. But you umad, and you say the blessing standing, the bracha lisate b'tzitzis, to wrap in tzitzis. Visatev miyadis roishoy adamata b'piv, and you, you, you wrap straight away your head that's a, it goes um to the to your lip so it's the sits the talus is over the head goes to the lip and then you take the ends and you put them around your neck and you wrap yourself up like the like the arab like the yishmaelim like a kafia type thing on there and you remain like that standing the time it would take to walk six feet. You say certain verses, etc. Then you can take it off your head. And we should also be careful that the sitzes shouldn't drag on the ground. Because it's not nice to the mitzvah. So therefore, um, you know, people tuck them out. Sometimes people tuck the strings into their belt, to their gart, or whatever, whatever it happens to be. <coughs> so we um, put on the sitters, put on the talus like that. Okay. Test number nine. <coughs> We can only, we're meant to make the bracha, we can only make the bracha on the sitzes during daytime and not nighttime, right? Because uh, as we said, the whole point of the mitzvah is you should see them. And that reminds you to keep the mitzvahs. So daytime you can see, it's light. And at nighttime you can't see them. So it's, it's dark. It's dark. So ideally, you know, let's say you're having an early morning, early uh, minion. So you should wait till it's light enough that you can tell the difference between light blue and white. Right? White enough, light enough outside that you can tell the difference in light blue and white. And that's the earliest time to put on uh, talus. In lavish is talus cotton, but I'd like now, if someone put on their talus cotton, their small talus, while well, it was still night, the Yavarach love, and, um, or he didn't make a brach on it, or he put on, he put it on before he had, had his hands cleaned, didn't wash his hands, and therefore he didn't make a brach Then, when the person makes a brach on his talus godel, on his davening talus, the big one. You should have in mind to also fulfill that his blessing he's making is also going on the small garment. The sits is the, the small one. Now someone doesn't have a talus godel, doesn't have a big talus. Uh, either because he, um, many Eastern European custom is not to put on till Till marriage, because of that, or he just doesn't have one, or he doesn't have it with him. Then, im loyvesh is a talus cotton, but yoyim v'yadon the kias yevarchalov. If he puts his small garment on during the daytime while his hands are clean, he makes the following bracha: al mitzvah sitzes. Vim loyshayik sheni yachlo varchalov, and if he put them on. When he wasn't able to make a blessing, afterwards, once it is daytime and his hands are clean, he takes the tzitzis into his hand 
and he makes the blessing al mitzvahs. The im yashom cotton. However, if he slept in it and he didn't change to another one, he slept in the tas cotton. No yavarech lav achikach cloud doesn't make another brock at all. Hashem yavarech atalus gadol. You come with the fatura. Just rather when he puts on his his big talus for davening, he should have in mind to fulfill that obligation as well. Okay. Yud. Number 10. Ha-poisha talisla yivadayat al-achsul yad. He takes off his talus and he has in mind to put it on immediately again. All right, so the same example. Uh, so he's going to say, fill the holocha basic kisa if he's going to the bathroom. So he's going to the bathroom quickly. It's going to be a few minutes and he's going to put it back on. So when he puts it back on, he doesn't need a new brocha. And we're just saying the brackets is because technically, sitzes can go into the bathroom as we do wear our small ones. The reason we take off the big one is because it's a garment designated for davening. And therefore, since it's designated for davening, it's not, uh, we don't take this garment into, into the bathroom. But technically, sitzes can be worn in the bathroom. So that's why we don't need a new bracha. I will im haisa daita sholish for He he wasn't going to put it back on. He took it off. So we're planning to wear it tomorrow or in five hours, whatever it is. The nimloch and then change his mind. Nachso the vasha and he put it straight back on. Sarach lavarach love. Now he needs to make a new bracha because once he took his mind off wearing it, now he has to make a new bracha. Vim nafal talisoy memeno shaloy miskaven. And if his talis fell off. Uh, unintentionally. Im nishal gufoi, as long as part of the talus is still on his body, afa pishurubo nafal, even if most of it fell off, kim shnisha alav kasasmina mitzvah, since at least one part of the mitzvah, even a little bit, remains on him, ain't a sarach lachsalabarach mishkasam alav, he doesn't have to make a new brocha when he fixes it. Aba, however, it doesn't, it's not on his body at all anymore. The whole talus fell off. Even though he grabbed it in his hand, he's holding it. Since the mitzvah is not at all on his body anymore. Because there's no mitzvah to hold a talus in your hand. The mitzvah is to wear it. The satev by gufoi, the mitzvah is to put it on your body, wrap in your body. Therefore, sarach lebarach shes lavoishoi levshay. He has to make a new bracha when he puts it back on. Vim ayoloi came to fasta b'makim she'en rashi lahavsik. Now let's say it happened in a place of davening. We're not allowed to speak, so we can't make a bracha. No yevarachas, so he doesn't make a bracha then. And the yamtim at yoch lebarach. Rather, he waits until. He's finished whatever he was doing, and he can now speak. And the varach oichas sits beyond the mavarach. Sorry, where he's is able to speak. The oichas sits beyond the mavarach, and then he takes the sits, the strings in his hand, and then he says the bracha. All right, just to give an introduction to the next uh, next part, and hopefully uh, the introduction won't take longer than the time we have left. We we have a general rule that people are happy for other Jews to use their oh. possessions for a mitzvah on a few conditions. One is there's no financial loss. So, so let's say, for example, you have something very uh, delicate, let's say like a, a knife that used to shech the animals. So it's very delicate. And even when it's handled by a professional, um, you have to constantly sharpen it, which means it shrinks because you're shaving off layers. So people do mind if someone uses that because it gives them a financial loss. We're talking about without permission, right? Someone asks permission, obviously they can use it. But we have a general rule that if I own something, I would be happy for someone else to use it for a mitzvah on condition there's no financial loss. Also on condition they don't wander off with it. So 
normally if someone wears a talus, would wear my talus for a few minutes if I leave it in my place in Shul. I mean, I happen to not leave my talus full and Shul, I always take it home with me. But let's say I did. So someone came in and needs a talus. There's presumption that unless he knows otherwise, unless I've made it clear that I don't only want to use it, there's presumption that I'm happy for someone to use something like my talus because there's no financial loss if someone uses it. That's one condition. The other condition is I let him, I would let him use it where where it is. He like can't take it home or say, oh, you know, uh, I need a talus on my trip to the Bahamas. I'll bring it back next week. You know, it has to be it's just short term and and right where it is. So since we have this presumption, uh, so if you came to a shul and you needed a talus, now obviously if there is someone to ask, you should ask. But, you know, you came in from overseas. It's a little bit later. Everyone's davened already. There's no one around in the shul. Uh, we have assumption that you could, that people wouldn't mind if you use their talus. So you'd alaf, number 11. Mutalito talus al chaveiro bi ba alma. You're allowed to take, to use someone else's talus. Uh, again, um, Mikra Ba'al means it was a, an occasional thing. Like, you can't just start using it every day. It was like a one-off. Gam even though you didn't inform him. So, again, if he is around, you have to ask him. But he's not around. There's no one to ask. The Spalabod of Archalov, to be able to uh, daven in it and make a blessing. Why can you do that? Because we have a presumption that people are happy for someone else to use their possessions for a mitzvah when it doesn't cost them anything. Avol, however, you can't take it out of the room where you found it. Because the person may very well be particular about that. Doesn't want you taking home or or even to the next room. The Mahayal Talus couple, and if you found the talus folded up, then afterwards, when you finish with it, you have to fold it back up. You can't just dump it on the table. Shabbos, couple, and on Shabbos, when you can't fold it, at least you can't fold it in the in the creases. Right? Technically, you could sort of do like a a form of folding, not neatly in the creases, but whatever, but um, you can't fold it nicely, properly in the creases on Shabbos. The Kivan Shem, a couple of Mishum is a Shabbos. So since, so if the situation happened on a Shabbos and you can't fold it back up the way you found it because it's Shabbos, we presume the person forgives you because he understands you didn't leave it like that because you were selfish. You left like that because of a Shabbos issue. Now, if that was for davening, now if you're going to borrow to be called up to the Torah, many, many uh, congregations have a custom that when a person gets called to the Torah, even if he's not wearing a talus, you should put one on. Then, it becomes doubtful it's whether you make a blessing because you're not really wearing it for davening, it's just make a, a blessing on the Torah. Okay, and therefore, it's come chain of rights to the Knoiso. You should have in mind that you're not acquiring it. But as the clear Alma and the Sarachal Baraka, then everyone, uh, no one says you have to make a blessing on Tal's not yours. So when you borrow it, it's like you're acquiring for that moment. So you have in mind you're not acquiring, acquiring it. But if it's the congregation's Tal's, even if you're only going up to call to the Torah, you do make a blessing because since you are a member of the congregation, the Havik Shaloi, it's like yours, right? Because you're a partner in what the congregation owns. Okay, any any questions? Okay, it was a little more sort of dry and technical this week, but uh wasn't as exciting as uh, some of the other weeks, but hopefully it gives a good background. Rabbi, you want to give us a one-minute takeaway? A one-minute takeaway? No, for, uh, well, 
not about the sitzes, but not Tisha B'Av's coming up. So, uh, when you buy by a kosher talus, yeah, by kosher talus, that's right. But the, the main thing is, Shem should bless us, hopefully, that Tisha B'Av uh, will have the base of Mikdash this year and won't need to fast. But if, I? yeah, yes, um, if a and they... So you're breaking up. We can't hear what you're saying. There's something wrong with your microphone. It's breaking up. Yeah, I mean like like every third or fourth word. Can you hear me now? Yeah, hear you now, yeah. Um, it's uh someone is sick and they simply require meat or chicken, something more substantial. I'm, I'm sorry again I can't I can't um you, you want to send it in the chat send a question in the chat is it possible to give them me when Hello? No, yeah possible it's fast it's sick and if they seem to require it yeah if someone if someone is in a situation where they can't fast halakhically the health or whatever and if they need so they should keep it as simple as possible so if all they need is a bit of bread and water they should have bread and water but if they need for their strength meat or chicken then they can have that okay it's so okay. whatever they need but but the minimum they need yes. rabbi yes when are you done with the painter i think she's done um, yeah. If I can tell over a real quick thing, uh, when yeah. I was ready to become uh, religious again, so um, I was sitting in a in the uh, in the central bus station in Israel, and uh, there were these guys from Or Sameach, and I was wearing a yarmulke, but I was not religious, so um, they befriended me. And uh, in summary, um, I said we started to talk about different mitzvahs, and we started to talk about sitzes. So I said to them. I learned about sitzes when I was a kid, but it didn't really make any sense to me. Nobody, nobody explained. It to me. I said, if somebody would explain to me the reasons, maybe I would put sitzes on. So I said, for instance, why do we wear the begot? Why do we wear the cloth? So one guy says, it was two guys. One guy says, the cloth reminds you that you're enveloped in godliness. Yeah. I said, wow. I said, that's great. I said, I said, you know, this, and I said, what about the strings? And the other guy said, the strings remind you that you're tied to God. And I, yep. I, was, I was so affected by those two statements. It's, uh, it's from the Rizal. Wow, yeah. And uh, from the Rizal. Yeah, yesterday's the Rizal's yard time. So it was, uh, came to an inspiration. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. That's why. The origin, the custom of of wearing the big talus by marriage, because that total wrapping has to do more with the connection of the shem by marriage, and it's also he wants, yeah. Oh. So there we go. Yep. I wish everyone on for a week. If we have to fast, an easy fast. The shem should bless us, but we won't need to, and we'll have next year in the base of mikdash. Thank you, Thank Rabbi. You. Thank you, Bye. Rabbi. Okay.